that train is coming to me and turns on a flashlight. That train is stopped and turns on a flashlight. The light gets to me at the same speed. He says, that's a fact. Hence, time and space, you know, then he takes it from there. Space and time are related. So, um, talk about the bad stuff. This seems like a good time to watch the Colosseum. The Colosseum? The Colosseum. Why? Is that full of bad stuff or something? <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to watch. All right, all right. I left the Colosseum. I just can't see it through. And before I start to weaken, I've got to talk to you. You see your little boy there playing so calm and slow. I wish I'd learned that somewhere far from fury's blow. I bet to him it's obvious that a hand that hits can't hold. And a mother's touch of tenderness is the planet's real gold. And I guess I'll be forgiven for trying so hard to please like that hypocrite just driven past the multitude on its knees. Whisper to the warrior to cease the child's war. And whisper to the boy here that he need fear no more. Did you paint the sky this evening? It's almost pink enough If there isn't any love in freedom How did freedom get in love? Any moments of truth in there? Okay. Yeah, the, the, the man, he says to her, I see your little boy there playing so calm and slow. 
I wish I'd learned that somewhere far from Fury's blow. Um, and I bet to him, to the little boy, he says, it's obvious that a hand that hits can't hold, and a mother's touch of tenderness is the planet's real gold. So there's the man. It's, again, it's like a man-child thing. The man is thinking, look at this little boy playing next to his loving mom, a gentle mom, a mother's, with a mother's touch of tenderness, and playing calm and slow. So the child is calm and slow. And the man says, I wish I'd learned that somewhere. Far from Fury's Blow. Um, that's a moment of truth. That to me is like when Bob says, I put my fingers against the glass and bowed my head and cried. So sort of like, wait, I, I can't, or I would end your sorrows. What does he say? I forget. That's me, isn't it? But uh, <laughs> when he says, um, your crack, uh, what does he say? Crack at your lips, I still wish to kiss us to be by the strength of your skin. Your magnetic moments still capture the minutes of in. But it grieves my heart, love, to see you trying to be a part of a world that just don't exist. It's all just a dream, babe, a vacuum, a scheme, babe, that sucks you into feeling like this. So that feels like a, a moment of truth to him. Um, and then the other moment of truth is the forgiving. He says, I guess I'll be forgiven for trying so hard to please. So he's saying, wait. Okay, I know now why I was running so hard, you know, or trying to please so hard. Um, I know why. And I can figure it out by looking at this little boy and seeing how calm he is and realizing that wasn't me. I was nervous and scared um, of grown-up fury. So we get, we're forgiving. I guess I'll be forgiven for trying so hard to please. Like who? Like that hypocrite just driven past the multitude on its knees. Whoa. So it's, then it's saying, oh, okay. If you're going to start forgiving, are you going to fig- you're going to forgive these idiot tyrants who are endangering things? Or just doesn't matter. It's just hypocrites are bad, bad enough word. Okay, so like what, what, what? Where does the forgiveness stop? You know, which is a moment of truth. Um, but then he takes the words to whisper to the warrior to cease the child's war. Whisper to the warrior to cease the child's war. What? So he's saying, I'm going to take that knowledge that I can be forgiven because I didn't have the, I didn't, wasn't allowed to be a little boy playing with a mother, a tender mother, calm and slow. So I'm going to whisper to the warrior to cease the child's war. What? In other words, the struggle you got right now, the Mr. Warrior, which is, of course, the songwriter, the singer, that warrior, somebody walks up to him and says, stop the child's war. And the warrior goes, what? First he says, what are you talking about? But then he says, I'm allowed to stop the child's war? So there's a, to me, that's a moment of truth because we're, we're, we are fighting the wars or, fi- or working on the struggles of our childhood. And this guy is brave enough to walk up to the warrior, who happens to be himself, and whisper that it's over, it's okay, you don't have to fight that anymore. Wow. For me, that, that, that's like, I'm allowed to do that? You know, that one, of the, one, of the, one of my main expressions of life would be, I'm allowed to do that? Because my assumption is I can't do it. My assumption is I'm not allowed to do it. So, that makes sense to me. Um, and then the last moment of truth comes from 
wait a minute. Now you, you're feeling good. How about this beautiful woman over here who, of course, is being so gentle to this boy? So that makes the warrior love the woman because he sees her nurturing and being so. And he says to her, did you paint the sky this evening? Well, that's a moment of truth. In other words, oh, I, maybe I like the sky because I'm with you because it's so beautiful. Um, it's finally pink enough. Ooh. Hmm. Then he says, if there isn't any truth in freedom, I'm sorry, if there isn't any love in freedom, how did freedom get in love? Which is like, oh gosh, Is there love in freedom? No one really knows that. There might not be any love in freedom. If freedom means, if, 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 it was, if freedom is the opposite of commitment. But then, wait a second, you say, there isn't any love in freedom. So in street language, that would be, um, Stay loose, stay uncommitted, because there's no love and f- um, and and there isn't any love and there isn't any love and freedom. Is the sad part because it's, it's just, you, it, you're free, but if you're free, you don't have love because you don't have a commitment. But how did freedom get in love? So in other words, the guy who's in love feels free. So you're sitting there saying. There isn't any love and freedom or saying, I have to be free. But how did freedom, if, the, if, 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 there's, if there's freedom in love, what happens now? And he can't answer that question. He's just like, I guess he's done for the day, you know. <laughs> he's had enough. Oh any my. equations might be operating there? Oh, it's, you asked me that too. Oh, my gosh. Actually, yeah, okay, I'm glad you asked me that because four, five, six, and seven, um, five, six, and seven are the Deal With It trilogy. Have you heard of the Deal With It trilogy? I haven't. Where'd they get you? You I didn't do know. any research at all? Okay. Um, wow, okay. Wow. Okay. Number four is, I reduced it to IHCF equals N. I'm sorry for the math, but it breaks. IF, I, IHCF equals N is I have conflicting feelings and that is normal. Wow. I mean, that's, it's just so, it, it rolls off my tongue. Did it roll off my tongue? It sounded great. Uh, my guess is, I, what do I know? But I bet 72% of all loving people in this globe don't know that it's normal, that, that, you, that it's okay to have conflicting feelings and it's normal. I know for me, it used to cause me great difficulty because of, well, this is, I want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. I want this. Ah! And I was like, I thought I was breaking some incredible rule. Um, and um, the other one in there, as part of the trilogy, is, 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 is there are no bad feelings. So those are very liberating things to tell somebody. Somehow I always think of a guy having this problem. You know, and it's hard to always imagine it's some guy. Guys don't know they have feelings. Or, but this, if, 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 I wish right now I could walk up to every 13-year-old guy in the world and say, it's perfectly normal to have conflicting feelings. And there are no bad feelings. You know, there are bad actions, but there are no bad feelings. Mm-hmm. Meaning, if you fantasize, man, I'd like to go smack that person in the face. That's okay. To own that feeling is, is if anything, liberating you f- from the possibility of doing it. And not to feel guilty because you have a bad feeling. Instead, we want to beat ourselves up because we have conflicting feelings, and we want to beat ourselves up before we, because of bad feelings. What is, does that strike any chord in you? I would say the idea of letting your mind sort of process things in as harsh a way as you can so that you don't need to process it physically, that strikes 
that strikes a chord with me. Or not even physically, but you don't lash out at somebody because you can be, you can do it in your head. Yeah, I don't know. I think we're going to get to it later. But to me, the, one of the biggest things that I did, which that remind, what you said reminds me of, was when I realized that I can be furious and not lose control. What? I can be furious and not lose control? What? I can? I'll never forget the day <laughs> I put that into action. I'll never forget. And I said, I'm furious. And nothing else happened. I didn't pick this up. I didn't throw it. I didn't kick. <laughs> and I was like, wow. I can own being furious and not lose control. Anyway, I, um, yeah, the Deal With It trilogy. Um, wow. As I, somebody wrote here, the math here is very complicated. It, it is complicated. Um, here's the Blame trilogy. I want to blame. I want to blame someone. I might as well blame you. Mm. So if you, if, if, you, if you track it down and study it, That's a real basic thing. I want to blame. And obviously I want to blame someone. I might as well blame you. Better than me. <laughs> that, yeah, that comes out. I mean, that's, that's sort of like, that just sort of like flows from it. Um, the idea that depression is anger turned on oneself was very interesting for me. It helped me think, wait a second. Maybe I'm unhappy because I'm mad at myself. Why am I mad at myself? For the, and then we, we just talked about why I'm not mad at myself anymore, or how I figured it out, you know? So the depression is anger turned on oneself. Hmm. I think that's why the therapist will say, oh, you know, Susie, or is Jim, you were mad at your mother for that. Yes, I was. Thank you for, and, and Jimmy, thank you for telling me about that. Jimmy leaves the therapy and he f feels light and free. My father told me the story of, about himself, how, he d how that happened to him. He's, he went to a therapist when he was like 40, between 40 and 45, and, he, and the therapist helped him realize how his mother had been very uh, overwhelming or what's, you know, helicoptering and all mm -hmm. that. And he said he would walk back to his office from seeing that therapist, have no idea why. He was like, he didn't understand the mechanism the way we're talking about it. What is this meta, whatever it is, like we're talking about the method. He'd, but he, he was walking back to his office, he said, and I just felt light and free, and I didn't know why. So that's when I heard depression is anger turned on itself. So it's probably healthier to go through the blame trilogy of I want to blame, I want to blame someone, I want to blame you. That's healthier than I have to blame myself, I guess. Um, and that... In the, in the song, the guy is trying to free himself of um, self-blame. Hmm. Hmm. So I'm doing all the talking here. Um, when you were in a jazz band, I mean, mm. you, you were in a jazz band, did you have a, well, let's just ask this, what was your most memorable moment as you think about it? This is probably a good time to watch Goddess from the West. We're not, you're not gonna answer, all right. I can't believe you're back Straight lines don't bend I was at the beginning So what's this, the end? Legend of my time, goddess from the west, now appear and lie on another quest. I had love behind the curtain, you had romance. 
the stage I was lost to all who left me You were found by those who stayed I made a promise that night You were singing with Claire When you saw me watching from the top of the stairs Do you still have followers Chanting out your name I just need bread and water And someone to blame Why didn't I major History. Do you think I could still give up all pretension, get my license to kill? Another equation here? Oh, boy. You know there are. Uh, this, I actually feel very guilty about this song, blaming myself, because <clears throat> I told her in this song that um, I just need bread and water and someone to blame. And she's the one, actually, that, that told me that there's a whole psychologist, more, maybe more than one, that the need to blame, and that's why I was stealing it from the Blame Trilogy, it's like a basic human need. Interesting. Um, and she's the one that pointed that out to me. She was very smart, the goddess from the West. Um, but I feel guilty because I put it in my own mouth. I say, <laughs> uh, I only need bread and water and someone to blame. Um, so I guess I can credit her that right now. Another equation at work here? Uh, um, yes, um, one of the Einstein-Stephen equations, Stephen's equations is, I think I did something wrong, but it's too scary to think about. Mm. Ever felt that way? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's what, can I go back and change my life? And this says, she says, you know, why didn't I major in, in um, history? Do you think I could still... Give up all pretension. Get my license to kill. Um, so he's looking back in that way. Um, and he's also opening the feelings to what they had in their sophomore and junior year. I had love behind the curtain, you know. So, and she had romance on the stage, so sort of like he, they were getting different things from each other. He was getting romance behind the curtain. 
But then when the curtain was open, she had ro romance on the stage. So that was sort of like a way of saying, thank you. But this is a singer song too, because as he points out, um, he made a promise while watching her singing with Claire. And um, since I know the songwriter pretty well, he did make a promise singing with Claire. Sorry, he made a, a promise seeing the goddess of the West singing with Claire. And that's related to, am I allowed to do that? Because um, here was a woman, a young woman, confident enough to sing in the, hall, in, the, in the stairwell and harmonize with Claire and inspire this guy who had this feeling, I'm not allowed to do that. Hmm. And he, that's when he says, I, I made a promise that night. Um, but then at the end he says, I gave up making promises, never got me anywhere. So he's like, wait a minute. The promises I made didn't really fulfill. I didn't get the fantasy I thought, you know, which was true for me. And I had to, you know, process that of being a songwriter, writing 84 songs, in a sense, for myself. You know, I didn't, I, didn't, I thought I had that promoter gene, but I was too busy writing them, you know. But, but I was annoyed that I didn't, um, that I wasn't singing in the stairwell with Claire like she had been, meaning I was annoyed that I wasn't getting recognition. Here, when she was doing it, here was me watching her. Um, hmm. Hmm. Interesting. And then, it, then the idea of how could I be back with her when it says right from the beginning, um, straight lines don't bend. In other words, how could my story be inter, inter, interlapping with yours again? It's interesting, I, I, uh, she came into where I worked just a mere 30 years later. And I remember asking, the, there were young people working for me and I introduced them to the goddess. <laughs> and I said, which one of them, I said, who's luckier, you know? that we have, we've had that, whatever, that 35 years has passed, that we've lived our life, or you have them ahead of you. You know, sort of like, who's the luckier guy? The guy that just got off the Ferris wheel or the guy that's just about to get on? And the answer is? Whatever you want it to be. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, I like anticipation, personally. Well, there's that book, um, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, which was the saddest book, but he had a thing about being next. Mm. Being next. And I think about that a lot. If I'm looking forward to doing something, that's, is that better? Well, you said, said in, yeah. You is can't it, be let down when you're looking forward to something. You can be let down when something happens. Maybe that's pessimistic. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we can't answer that. <sighs> then with her, you know, he says, I gave up making promises, never got me anywhere, but I can wash that dollar and that dress you have to tear. So he's, he's kind of hard on the goddess. You know, like, mm -hmm. why does the goddess need somebody to wash her dollar? Did, you know, that's kind of mean in a way. You know, what did she do? That, and the dress you have to tear, like, you know, um, in at least one religion, when someone dies, you tear your clothing. So if you have to tear some of your clothing, it means someone's gone. Maybe that's, maybe she's missing, maybe the guy that died was the guy who watched her in the stairwell? I don't know. Hmm. 